Hey guys, Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to show you an exciting new product. This one based on this original sword from the Oakshot Institute. Stay tuned. So first today I'm going to show you this original sword, uh, which dates to probably the first or second decade of the 16th century. It is probably Venetian based on the decoration and style of it. This grip is not original. It was replaced at some point. The rest of the sword is. Right, you can see the scallop shell motif and design throughout, as well as this really interesting complex cross guard, which has a staple instead of a ring that protects your knuckles when you're engaging in Bolognese swordsmanship. So this sword uh, is roughly contemporaneous with uh, the Italian Wars, uh, which range from the 1480s through, oh, the third quarter of the 16th century in which the Venetian Republic was engaged in warfare with France and Spain under the leadership of the Habsburg dynasty and during which Machiavelli said that Venice managed to lose all the territory it had gained in 800 years uh, of leadership. Uh, Venice, however, was a major site of military and financial and economic innovation, and this sword is a really good representation of the type of weapon that was being produced there. So this blade, is hexagonal, as you can see there, with a single fuller and a ricasso. Uh, this would be a type 19 blade in the oak shot typography, although it is getting a little late for that typology. Sorry, typology, not typography. <laughs> uh, you can see the peen here. Now, this sword we've always loved. It's one that oak shot collected during his life that then he bequeathed to the Oakshot Institute. And we've always wanted to make it. We have had other projects. So finally, we can announce our new product, which we are calling the Venetian Captain's Sword. Uh, the Venetians at the time had both a military and hired lots of mercenaries. And this type of sidearm was very prevalent. Uh, if you've read, or if you want to read, Achille Marozzo's fight book, The Opera Nova, the new work uh, that came out in the 1530s, you'll see many one-handed swords of similar dimensions to this one. So this cross guard here, or this staple, protects the outside of your hand during the complex binding actions that occur in the Italian sword fighting tradition, right? So if I have my sword up here in a high guard, you bound me, this protects my knuckles. If I'm in the opposing guard, it protects my fingers up here, right? And here, any guard or sword that comes down upon my cross is less likely to chop my finger off, which is good. You need your fingers if you're sword fighting, right? So it was, an interesting early innovation. Another interesting thing about this sword is that this staple actively prevents you from being able to really effectively put your finger up over the guard onto the ricasso. Right? This isn't by accident. Whoever designed this sword, I think, was a sword fighter, a fencer, or in consultation with them, and were very clear about the kinds of protection that they needed to avoid incidental contact with the hand while they were seeking the blade of their opponent. And so this sword wants to move in uh, these dynamic ways. It is very thin out here at the point, right? So this comes down to just a few millimeters thick uh, down from uh, about five sixteenths of an inch uh, up here, not five sixteenths, sorry, three sixteenths, uh, 
up at the cross, just a little under a quarter inch thick, just to mix my metrics because I'm American to mess with you guys. Uh, it weighs two pounds, 12 ounces-ish, and the point of balance is right out here, about four inches from the cross guard. The pommel is a type R in Oakshaw's typology that's highly decorated, so it is globose with these really cool uh, shell decorations on it. We've also decided, since the grip was not original, to add one that has two risers. And when you hold this, the middle finger goes right between the two risers, which helps to lock your hand into the correct position with the pommel against the base of the palm of your hand, which helps you to support it and to move it through guards. You see that as you move, the point wants to stay relatively still, but it cuts very substantially in the style that was common during this period in Italy. So check out this new product. You should probably buy one because they're really awesome. This is super close to the original because we have the original at the Oakshot Institute. So you're not gonna find a more authentic early 16th century Italian side sword than this. Thanks guys.